to another YouTube video. Today we're talking about the new moon in Leo. Um, it's happening tomorrow. <laughs> I've been a little bit off my game in terms of making these videos on the schedule that I would like to make them on. Oh well. We'll start with the Moonology deck, which is astrolog astrologically based. And we see the new moon in Leo. A little mantra here is confidence is your key to success. Confidence is like a um, less arrogant form of self-love. Leo rules the fifth house in the birth chart, which is like the house of creativity, passion, desire. And so I'd like to interpret this new moon as, you know, we'll leave them out right here. How can we invite more playfulness into our life? Some lightness, especially after going through uh, cancer season, which is all about our emotions, and also the energy of July in general, and this is the last week of July, being very much so um, revealing of something about ourselves, something that wants to change. So I feel like while many of us, and it doesn't have to necessarily be you, are grappling with new understandings of self um, in, in different contexts. Leo's coming in to be like, it's all good, man. It's all good. Leo is flirtatious. Leo is fun to be around. Um, Leo wants you to celebrate. Find more things to praise and celebrate and you'll be celebrating all the time. If you want to check out the weekly energy video, I'll put a link to it. It's be right there. Watch those in tandem to get deeper into what's happening this week. I will just sort of um, name drop a couple of transits because this new moon in, they're important. The new moon in Leo is happening at the same time that Mercury is squaring off with Mercury, or sorry, with Chiron and um, North Node. Chiron is our wounded healer. It's like what we, it's what we come to this life to heal so that we can help others. Chiron. You can look up where your Chiron is. And North Node is also like your life's purpose. So what does it mean for Mercury to square off with those two um, bodies at the time of New Moon in Leo? Nearly precisely, right? Same day. I don't know. I think that means there is like an ex more of an acceptance. The squaring off is sort of like there is a resistance and Leo is saying like it's okay to sort of let some of these things in. Leo is also about being seen. Leo wants to be seen as somebody who's like is visible. So there might, Mercury's communication, there might be something about you claiming for yourself a new direction in life or healing something for yourself. Even if it's not publicly, it's, you know, you're, it does, it does change how you express yourself. And I did not plan this, this way, but like it's the new moon Leo and this is my f first time y'all are seeing my new red hair. I actually had this planned for a few months and I don't, do not have the kind of organizational forethought to be like, this is when I'll have red hair in this new moon Leo video. No, it's not like that though. I'd love to, for you to believe it. Don't get me wrong. Innocence, in reverse, I'm using the dream deck, Noche Obscura. Yeah, there's been a very, and hope, there's been a very difficult period that has passed. And innocence in reverse is about <laughs> taking back our innocence, being hopeful. So what is innocence? Innocence is related to our childhood, right? To our playfulness. So that's a very Leo message there. Hmm. Four, one, four. There's hope here. And the Noche Obscura is, is the dark night of soul. It's like the pit, <laughs> for lack of a better word. It's the pit. It's like where desperation is, but then we have hope. So it's pretty clear cut for me what this is saying. There's a rejuvenation of innocence through hope after a difficult period of time. 
Now I'm using the Modern Witch Tarot. I've been really drawn to this deck recently because I've been taking Anna Corinna, or yeah, Corinna. Shit, I'm messing up her name. I'll give her a shout out in the next video. I'm taking a class called the Tarot School for Liberation and it's reframing the Rider Waite Smith deck, the like classic, into frameworks that are anti-capitalist, anti-racist, and just have, in my opinion, way more relevancy to like how we derive messages from cards to be delivered like in the modern age. And so yeah, the Modern Witch Tarot is a deck I've come back to. What do we have underneath? The Tower, Ace of Cups, Nine of Wands. There's something about, again, this change, this change, and then Ace of Cups is like love and emotions. Something about how you feel has changed. Uh, maybe you're, you've like changed your mind or rather changed your heart about something or something changed that is refilling your cup here. There's like some sort of lesson learned. Or a pattern in love, a pattern in maybe how you treat yourself. How you take care of yourself um, that's going to be an important thing to look back to after we get to the end of the reading to see what helped us to change what helped us to reclaim this innocence um, and hopefulness um, during a difficult pattern something that required our perseverance love was there all along then we have the Four of Wands, the Five of Swords, the Four of Cups, Four of Pentacles, the Hermit. You have three fours already so far. The Star, there's hope again. The Nine of Cups, Wish Fulfillment, the Emperor, and the Nine of Swords. Another nine. Something in the past has been held on to, I think, because you were really hoping something would work out, and yet there's something that's not quite um, convenient, not convenient, like that just isn't ideal because you or another person are getting hurt. You know, like what if you're dealing with a person, it could be you or a person, if it's a situation, like just something about the situation hasn't been fair to everybody, so it's, I think, this is the, this, um, this loss of innocence is like under, understanding that something doesn't work anymore and the very adult reaction to have to be like, well, okay, let me deal with this. Let me go inside. Let me understand how my life is organized so that I can, at least from my end, address this situation. How can I make this better? You're not here to change other people or to change how other people behave in situations that you share. But how am I coming to this from a place that is more uh, responsible, more um, structural, logical, um, that is actually supportive of myself and others? So what I see happening in the future is actually this like stepping away from a situation or a person or a connection um, because while there is a lot of love in the situation and I know that because of the Ace of Cups here and the energy underneath what's surrounding this um, this love I'll just say like whatever that is, is for you what's surrounding it is there's a lot of change happening there's a lot of still difficult things going on and so it's almost like it's better to just make yourself scarce in order to heal and to find hope like to find where the traction is in your life. <clears throat> now this isn't the kind of forward movement where like you're going anywhere very fast. The star is actually kind of about sitting, standing still, being hopeful, re rekindling sort of the, the hope of the current situation. Um, I do compare the tower to Noche Obscura. Like these two cards for me are 
very closely linked in their energies. Look at the artwork, two different decks. One is an Oracle deck and the other is obviously Rider, Rider Wade Smith. And then we have the star showing up, which follows the tower and hope, which for me, again, Oracle and Rider Wade Smith, very much linked. So there might be things about a situation that still feel hopeless. This might be something that you're actively dealing with. I think that the new moon in Leo is a great energy to begin to incorporate lightness and playfulness. And it's, I don't think that you necessarily want to let this thing go. <clears throat> I think you are wishing and hoping for better. Uh, but there's still a lot of internal work to be done. And I feel like there could be more work done in terms of a mutual understanding. But not before, I think, you do you, right? And there's still a lot of things that um, may or may not make you, you know... The Nine of Swords here, this is like about the energy of like something keeping you up at night. It could also be receiving messages um, in dreams or like at night. So while you're focusing on your healing, maybe keep a dream journal. That's one thing. Um, or, and or, really focus on addressing the things that worry you and ask yourself, why is this worrying you? How are you, um, you know, reparenting yourself in order to change how you approach a situation, change how you react to a situation. You know, Leo wants to be loved. Leo is flirtatious. Leo is creative. I think Leo can also be easily triggered. You know, for the lack of, for, with, a, with a lack of acknowledgement or... Um, any worries that a Leo, that Leo energy is present in will be exacerbated. They'll be on the surface because Leo wants you to know that you, that this hurts. Leo wants, Leo wants us to um, address the situation maybe openly and loudly. <laughs> um, and maybe there will be some situations like that that show up for you. For others, you know, there's there's Virgo. Also, I see Virgo, Aries, Aquarius. Yeah, that's the Hermit, Emperor, the Star. I'm really into the Hermit card and the energy that's that's showing up with this Hermit. This is about seeking wisdom. This is about you know, reflecting on everything that's happened in your life until now and finding a new way forward. So I love it. I love it so much. And the emperor is, is about, you know, structure, making decisions. Confidence is your key to success. The emperor is pretty confident. The emperor is pretty confident in, in their decisions and the decisions that are being made now have to do with I'm not available for things that aren't good for me. I'm focusing on my healing. The Nine of Swords here at the end really just for me affirms that the work is never over. The healing work is never over. There's always going to be things that come up that will put us back into mind states of when we were young. Re um, revelations from childhood, you know, may appear to be dealt with or to be sifted through and reorganized. How does that affect what you wish f for yourself? How does that affect how your, your, your worldview, your life view, what you want to accomplish? That's that Mercury squaring off with Chiron and North Node. How is it affecting now how you, what you will choose to do with your life if you're at, for example, a precipice or like a fence? Even if you don't feel like you're on a fence. I mean, you could always acknowledge 
that every day you have a choice to do something completely different. And you might, you just might. Leo's gonna help you get there. Okay, thanks for watching y'all. See you on the next video. Uh, make sure you subscribe, like, share, do the thing. I'm almost at 100 subscribers, so like if I can get to 100, then maybe I can brand the channel and do some more uh, fun things with it that way. So definitely share it with at least one other person or two other people and tell them this is good stuff. So thanks again. I'll see you on the next one.